The worst drug you've ever done. <sighs> Ketamine. I don't even know what that is. Special K. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> it's fucking disgusting. I hated that drug. Why? Well, the first time I did it, I was like, I don't feel it. I don't feel it. And then... The next time I did it, uh, I was playing video games in Queens. I was living in Queens in New York, and and this kid cut, cut one. I was like, come on, I need a bigger line than that. So cut me a big line. I did a line. I was like, I don't really feel this shit, and I'm playing the video game. Then the dude starts coming back and beating me in basketball or whatever, and he looks over, and I'm just, like, in a catatonic state. I was, in, I, was uh, I like, fell into a K-hole. I, I, after I got up, I knocked over a bunch of shit in the kitchen, and then I was, like, trying to throw up in the toilet, but I oh. couldn't. I felt like I was going to fucking die. And, you know, being being the uh, addict that I am, I, of course, did more and did it a few more times after that. But I hated the length of acid. You know, mushrooms, I could still, you know, fuck with. Like, I would do them here and there, like, over the years, because it's only eight hours. But, you know, a masculine trip or an acid trip, man. I mean, it's that's a long a, ride. That's a, that's a, you know, 24, 36 hours, and you know, you start to lose your mind. You, th- you think things are real, even though you're trying to tell yourself it's not real. It's not real. You get stuck in that, and you get stuck in a lot of crazy thoughts that are scary. When was that time you did acid? Though? I was in New York, and um, a friend of mine was uh, selling ecstasy, so we used to pop around Manhattan, and and um. I was selling ecstasy too, but I, uh, with him, but we would, uh, I would push it back to Boston or whatever and kind of quantities and stuff like that. But he would run around and hit like the Upper West Side parties and stuff like that. So we were at a party, it was like three in the morning and there was no coke there. So uh, this girl, I was kicking it with this girl out on like this deck and she was like, well, I have acid if you want to do some drugs. And I was like, nah, I'm going to try to wait for some coke and... No coke happened, so I ended up doing ended up doing one hit of ass, and she's like, "It's really mild stuff. Why don't you take another hit?" So I took another hit, oh, no. and man, I was so fucking bugged out. It was crazy. We left the party. It was like six a.m. We're over <laughs> walking through the Queensbridge projects because we lived in uh, in Long Island City, Queens. Walking through the projects at night, which. <laughs> You know, as as a white dude in, in the '90s, it was not a good look. Right. Uh, I think they thought we would we would cops or junkies or something, but it just ended up being a night from hell. I was like stuck in my room, and the walls were closing in and out. I lost like ten pounds throwing up. Wow. I was sick to my stomach. I was looking at myself in the mirror and just like you know seeing evil. Trying to calm myself down Playing Tribe Called Quest tapes <laughs> And no matter what I put on It would speed up Like Like that Or it would Completely slow down Like Like Yo I could not get out of my head I wanted to go to the hospital I was so fucking tripped out But I had to go into work So I like walked up to Steinway Street In Queens And, and I, For some reason I thought if I wore a collared shirt I would be okay People so wouldn't I, know. I bought a college shirt, <laughs> and I'm like taking the train into Manhattan, tripping my balls. I, and I, I think I, I like walked up to the. Uh, oh, I went in to work, and um, and I remember <laughs> I looked at my boss's face, and it was like melting and shit. And I was like, I ate some bad chicken salad. I need to go home. <laughs> I just got up and walked out. It should be said that, Slain, you are sober now. Yeah, I'm almost six months sober now. It was more like uh, the straw that broke the camel's back. I don't mean like that in a, to lighten what it was, but, you know, a friend of mine passed away. Uh, I was home for the holidays, supposed to be visiting my son. I wasn't, you know... I did a show in Philly and I needed drugs in order to in order to stay awake because I was like on a three day bender and um, you know I collapsed after I got off stage you know I felt like you know I needed to be rushed to the hospital but I kind of wrote it out like I, you know my breathing started shutting down I had been in the emergency room like a dozen times over the over last year oh wow and uh, my body was just quitting on me I was throwing up three or four times a week for maybe the past ten years. And, uh, you know, like, that had taken its toll. Like, I would I would just throw up casually. I'd be walking down the street. 
I had just gotten so used to it, but my system was like revolting against me. Mm. And then I went and did a tour. I try to, I try to control it. Where, you know, I would stop for five days, just drink on the weekends, and it just started spinning out of control. You know, I realized like I was gonna die. Number one, and number two, like I was starting to become a person that I didn't want to become. I want, you know, I. I knew I was never going to be the father that I wanted to be, mm. you know, because I could justify it before because I could hold it together when I needed to when I go home and see my son and all that. But it's just it wasn't um, it wasn't working for me, man. And I knew I was I knew I knew so many people that died doing the same thing I was doing. I was lucky to be where I was. I was lucky to be alive still. And I had overcome so many things, like, and gotten so many great opportunities that I just felt like, what a waste. Yeah. What a waste of any talents that I have. What a waste of the opportunities I've been given and how disrespectful it is to the kids that I grew up with that have passed away from the same thing for me to be pissing it all away like that. And, uh, you know, I just wasn't happy with where I was at and I, and I needed to stop. What was your first deal? What was your first uh You know, that was paycheck. that's not really my story. Like it's always you know, I early on with Shan I had to do the the demos and stuff like that. But um Like what was your first It was always do it yourself. Like I, the White Man is the Devil Volume One, I pressed up fifty copies yeah. of them and I and I gave ten copies uh each to five different drug dealers and if you wanted to buy a bag of coke or a bag of dope or whatever it was extra ten dollars you had to take the cd otherwise you didn't get the bag that was the that was the price and i sold the, thirteen thousand copies like that no you did thirteen thousand giveaway copies they weren't giveaway well you yeah you gotta $10. buy <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right right 